Hi, my name is Heather Slusser with the University of Wisconsin Extension in Marathon County. And today, I'm gonna to talk with you about starting seeds. When getting started planting your seeds, you need to first identify the tray that you are going to use. There are various trays on the market, some of them with smaller cell packs and some of them with the larger cell packs. When you are deciding which tray fits your needs, consider what type of plants you are planning to put in each of the cell packs. Larger plants or plants that will get large such as your squashes and your tomatoes would work really good in the larger cell packs so then you don't have to transplant them in between. Something else to look at is to see if the cell packs have holes on the bottom of them. If the cell pack has holes on the bottom that allows water to seep up and so you can do from the bottom watering instead of watering from the top down. When we are doing our seedlings watering from the top down can cause them to float up so sometimes watering from the bottom is better. Now keep in mind you can also use pots that you have gotten from garden centers. Just make sure you wash them out before starting your seeds so you can get rid of any disease material or disease residue that's in there. Also, they have new cell packs that are biodegradable. You can get them attached to each other or you can get individual pots. And these are really nice because you can just put your seeds in there, start your seedlings, and then plant these directly in the ground. You don't have to worry about doing any transplanting, you know, taking the plants out of the seed pack. Look at all your options and identify what works best for you. When starting our seeds, you want a soil mix that is light and fluffy. A lot of the new soil mixes are what is known as a soilless mix. It's made up of a combination of peat moss and bark and perlite. So if you look at your mix and feel it, you'll feel that it's really light and fluffy. When you first get it out of the bag, it should have a little bit of dampness to it. It won't be completely dry, but it won't be completely wet either. So before we start using it to do our seedlings or to plant our seeds, we want to go ahead and get it wet. You want to add some water to your mix. Mix it up and make sure that you have a uniform wetness throughout the entire soil that you're going to use for your planting project. If you mix it up and there's still some dry spots, then add some extra water to it until it's uniform. You want to squeeze it and check it and make sure that it forms a clump, sort of forms a ball in your hand. You don't want to add so much water that it's dripping out of your hand when you squeeze it. You just want it nice and wet and to form that clump. The reason that you want to add water to your soil before you add your seeds is because the soil mix does not like water until it gets wet for the first time. Here you can see we've added water to the top of the pot and it takes a little bit of time for the water to go down. Now we have the water coming out of the bottom of the pot. If you are using the water coming out of the bottom of the pot as a gauge that you have watered your, your plants sufficiently, you're going to be sadly surprised because as we look at the soil that comes out of the pot, you can see that it's still dry, that the water that was added ran down the side of the pot and the soil. So it didn't actually go through the soil and get all of the soil wet. So when we are planting and starting our seeds, we want to make sure that we're working with a wet soil mix so that they're easier for us to water and maintain that, that wet consistency. Now that we have our soil wet, we are ready to add it to our trays. Go ahead and take the soil out of your bin or whatever container you've been using to get it wet and add it to your trays. When you add it, make sure you're not packing it down because we want to allow room for the roots to grow. If our soil is too compacted, then our roots will have a hard time growing and our seedlings won't do. Now that we have our seed trays filled with soil, we're ready to plant our seeds. So get your seed packet and let's look at the back for a minute. So on a lot of the seed packets, it'll tell you what vegetable you're planting. So on this seed packet, we're planting a tomato. It'll also tell you the specific variety that you're planting. So here, we're planting a black crim tomato. Besides telling you the type of vegetable and the variety of that vegetable, it'll give you a little description so you know what the fruit is going to look like. It'll also tell you the growing requirements, how much sunlight this vegetable is going to need. So for our black crim tomato here, we need full sun, which means it needs more than six hours of sunlight per day. Our seed packet will also tell us the days to harvest. It will take us 80 days to harvest this plant. So what that means is from germination until the fruit is ready to pick or to harvest, it will take 80 days. We want to plant the seeds at a quarter inch depth and we want to space them about three to four feet apart. 
and that's going to be for our transplants. When we transplant out in the garden, we want to plant those about three to four feet apart. The map at the bottom of the page is really important because this helps you understand when you want to transplant your seedlings outside. Transplant is when we take them from growing inside to planting them outside. So look at the map, find where you're at on the map, and then match it up with the color codes at the bottom. If you're in the light blue area, then you want to transplant or plant your, your little seedlings outside between May and June. The other piece of information that I want to draw your attention to on this seed packet is the very bottom where it says packed for and sell by. The packed for, in this case it says 2018, means that these seeds were packed for the 2018 growing season and that the manufacturer is recommending that they are sold by November of 18 for best germination rate. Now does this mean that when 19 comes I won't be able to use these seeds? No, not at all. The one thing you want to keep in mind is that the older the seeds are, they have a packed for date that is several years in the past, they will have a lower germination rate. To compensate for this, you can just put more seeds per cell pack, and the theory is, is that if I have more seeds, then at least one out of the four, or one out of the two, however many you put in there, will germinate. In this video, the seeds that we are using were packed for the 2017 growing season. So we're going to put two seeds per cell pack, as you can see me doing here. Make sure that when you're planting more than one seed in a cell pack that you separate them. Don't put them all in the same hole. And the reason for this is because if you separate them and they both germinate, you'll end up with two seedlings on opposite ends of the seed pack that you can then separate and plant. If you put them all in the same hole, and all of the seeds germinate, then you'll end up with two plants that are mixed together with their roots intertwined. And it's harder to separate these guys and have a successful transplant of both of them. Now that you have your seeds planted, you wanna make sure that you label your trays somehow. As you can see, I have all of the seed packs lined up right next to where I planted those seeds. You're gonna to wanna to water your seeds. Even though the soil is wet, we wanna add a little bit more water. However, remember, if we add the water to the top, this will cause our seeds to float up, as you can see here. So make sure you remove one of the cells and you water from the bottom and allow that water to soak up into the soil through the bottom of it instead of watering from top down. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy planting your seeds.